After the Chinese real estate giant Evergrande Group plunged into a debt crisis, Xu Jiayin, the chairman of the Evergrande Group, whose net worth once reached 42 billion U.S. dollars, was recently arrested. His second son, Xu Tenghe, and several senior executives were also detained. It's rumored that Xu Jiayin's arrest stemmed from allegations of faking a divorce to transfer assets, alerting the Xi Jinping administration that he intended to pass the problematic company onto the state, prompting intervention. Xu Jiayin's arrest signals the potential collapse of Evergrande, a real estate and financial empire. As China's largest property developer and even touted as the largest in the universe, this might be the start of a domino toppling. The last time 65-year-old Xu Jiayin made a public appearance was on July 4th of this year when he presided over a meeting for Evergrande's football club. In fact, over the past month, there has been turmoil within Evergrande, with many executives being taken away for investigation. First, on the evening of September 16th, Shenzhen police reported criminal measures taken against Du Liang the executive director and general manager of Evergrande Financial Wealth Management. Then, Zhu Jialin, a former chairman of Evergrande Life Assurance, was also investigated. It wasn't until September 27th that Bloomberg first reported Xu Jiayin's detention, which Evergrande Group confirmed on September 29th, stating he was under compulsory measures for alleged illegal activities. Currently, Evergrande remains heavily in debt. As of December 31st, 2022, Evergrande Group's total liabilities amounted to roughly 2 trillion yuan, about 300 billion US dollars, making it the most indebted real estate developer in the world. Some calculations indicate that since its establishment in 1997, Evergrande Group has accumulated debts of over 2 trillion yuan in 26 years, equivalent to a daily loss of 21.9 billion yuan or 30 million US dollars. This has sparked online debates suggesting that Xu Jiayin's business model relied on intricate political business relationships and might not have been feasible without government support. Xu Jiayin's arrest is closely related to over 600 billion yuan disappearing from Evergrande's financial statements. On July 17th, the Evergrande Group released a performance announcement that detailed a whopping reduction of 664.3 billion yuan in revenues from previous years due to, quote, accounting treatment changes, causing shockwaves in domestic and international markets. Behind the Xu Jiayin incident are complex issues. Many speculate that he was transferring assets, including faking a divorce from his wife Ding Yumei and setting up a trust fund worth up to 2.3 billion US dollars for his son in the US. Wealthy individuals often set up family trusts to cleverly avoid taxes and ensure their descendants' financial security. In a report published by Evergrande in June 2022, Ding Yumei was still referred to as Mrs. Xu, but by August 14th, her status had changed, leading to speculations of a technical divorce between the couple. At the end of 2021, Xu Jiayin and Ding Yumei jointly sold 1.2 billion shares of the Evergrande Group, reducing their combined stake from 76.69% to 67.87%. Research by Daily Economic News revealed that Ding Yumei holds a Canadian passport, fueling speculations that Xu Jiayin might be transferring assets under her foreign identity to evade investigations by the Chinese government. Industry insiders estimate that Xu Jiayin and his ex-wife have taken at least 200 billion yuan from Evergrande's public accounts. The actual extent of their undisclosed benefits remains unknown. According to Evergrande's financial statements, since the introduction of the three red lines in 2022, that is the financial regulatory guidelines in China relating to the ratio of debt to cash, equity, and assets, Xu Jiayin has transferred assets worth around 100 billion yuan overseas through dividends and dollars bonds. Analysts point out that Xu Jiayin has shifted some of his assets abroad through a technical divorce with Ding Yumei. Among the hundreds of billions in dividends acquired from Evergrande, offshore companies in the British Virgin Islands and the Cayman Islands, wholly controlled by Xu Jiayin and Ding Yumei, received a significant portion of these dividends through Evergrande Group. The funds from this technical divorce were subsequently transferred abroad, ending up in the pockets of Ding Yumei, who resides overseas. Reports indicate that Xu Jiayin's second 
son, Xu Tenghe, known as Peter Xu in inner circles, is also under investigation. He last drew attention in December 2021 when international media reported the sale of his lavish mansion on Los Angeles' Sunset Boulevard for a discounted 12.5 million U.S. dollars. Xu Tenghe serves as the group executive in charge of overseeing the wealth management subsidiary. Data shows that Evergrande has left behind 1.62 million incomplete housing units, affecting 6 million homeowners. Over the past two years, Evergrande's employees, contractors, and homebuyers have continuously protested, demanding their money back. What happens to those who purchase these unfinished properties if Xu Jiain and senior Evergrande executives are under investigation? Following Xu Jiain's arrest, the BBC interviewed Guo Tianran, a homeowner who purchased an Evergrande property in 2021 for 820,000 yuan. Having made a down payment of 240,000 yuan, he now bears a monthly mortgage of nearly 6,000 yuan. Distraught at the possibility of his home never being completed, he expressed profound sorrow. Guo Tianran shared that after paying his mortgage, he's left with a mere 1,000 to 2,000 yuan for living expenses each month. Reflecting on the fact that his pension funds were invested in the property and considering the 30-year mortgage ahead, he fears ridicule from friends and family. Despite the government's intervention and promises by local developers to complete Evergrande's halted projects, few workers appear on site, diminishing his hopes of project resumption. Out of options, he has now stopped paying his mortgage, vowing to resume payments only when construction restarts. He mentioned, quote, Many home buyers have halted their mortgages, telling banks they'll resume payments only when construction recommences. Some even threaten to camp out in bank lobbies. Evergrande's reputation once drove many to purchase homes under its name. Yet many of these buyers now find their life savings drained with homes that still need to be completed. Phoenix New Media interviewed a female owner of one of Evergrande's incomplete properties, who tearfully shared, quote, My family is broken and we are virtually homeless. The woman and her husband had spent their lives working on construction sites, saving only a few hundred thousand yuan. Hoping to buy a marital home for their son, she decided on Evergrande's Times New Town project, making a down payment of 400,000 yuan on an off-plan property with a monthly mortgage of 4,500 yuan. This decision emptied her savings and incurred additional debt. Unexpectedly, construction halted after the building was topped out. The delay led to marital discord between her son and daughter-in-law, with the latter considering divorce and the husband blaming his wife for the unfortunate investment. The woman now resides in the unfinished property, working tirelessly on construction sites, skimping meals and essentials to make mortgage payments, and struggling emotionally. Her story represents just the tip of the iceberg. Many residents unwilling to give up on their homes continue to pay mortgages they can't afford while foregoing rent. Forced to inhabit the incomplete structures temporarily, they strive to save on rental costs. One homeowner of Evergrande's unfinished property in Wuhan lamented, quote, I haven't received my purchased home and my fiancé has left me. Many relatives criticize my decision and even villagers mock me. I lost my soon-to-be wife just because of this unfinished house. Another distressed homeowner of Evergrande's incomplete building in Wuhan said, quote, I've paid nearly 100,000 yuan in mortgages, feeling immense frustration. I have elderly parents in their 80s still farming to help alleviate our financial stress. Xu Jiain founded Evergrande in 1996 and listed in Hong Kong in 2009, catapulting him to China's richest man. With a high turnover and high leverage model, Evergrande emerged as a leading real estate company. Over the years, Xu Jiain expanded into areas outside Evergrande's core competency, including bottled water, electric vehicles, pig farming, and professional sports. He even bought two private jets, using them to transport his football team, now Guangzhou Football Club, to matches. His electric vehicle company once had an audacious vision to surpass Tesla. Xu Jiain's rise catered to China's local land finances and property bubble economy. His success was built on the unfettered support of the Chinese Communist Party, bank financing, and draining two generations of ordinary people's savings. Fuyao glass owner Cao De Wang, known as the Glass King, candidly commented on Xu Jiain's business model, highlighting how $3.9 billion in assets leveraged $2 trillion in loans. 
An online user remarked, quote, unscrupulous environments breed unscrupulous people. Hu Ping, the chief editor of Beijing's Spring, suggested that Xu Jiayin's arrest was a move by the Chinese government to find a scapegoat for China's economic woes. He stated, quote, real estate is a significant artery of China's economy, directly affecting millions of people's lives. The government aims to lead the public to believe that the real estate crisis is caused by unscrupulous businessmen. Hu Ping told Voice of America that Xu Jiayin's arrest and the potential of a prison sentence will reverberate across China's business community. This incident could instill widespread fear among businessmen, especially the affluent ones, anticipating potential punitive measures amidst China's deteriorating economic situation. Akio Yaita, the Taipei bureau head of Japan's Sankei Shimbun, stated, quote, Xu Jiayin's business empire is essentially a pyramid constructed from a house of cards, fragile and easily toppled. Discussing Xu Jiayin's arrest, he believes that, quote, Xi Jinping's move against Xu Jiayin primarily aims to shift most of the blame for China's economic downturn onto someone else. Some experts probe deeper into Xu Jiayin's fall, viewing it as a symbolic end of an era in China's real estate market. Mo Zhishu, a Chinese independent scholar and former editor of China Times, perceives China's real estate sector as a giant Ponzi scheme, with Evergrande just being a part of it. Quote, the problem with a Ponzi scheme is that there always needs to be a next person to keep it going. Xu Jiayin's downfall marks the beginning of the end of this scheme, and everyone will pay a price, he remarked. Xie Jinhe, a chairman of Taiwan's Wealth magazine, wrote on Facebook, quote, After Xu Jiayin's domino falls, more will follow, including real estate giants like Country Garden, Sunak, Shimao Group, Kaisa Group, Sina Ocean Group, Agile Property, and China Aoyuan Group. What follows? How much bad debt will financial institutions swallow? How many will plunge into negative assets when housing prices drop? Then comes deleveraging, local government debt crisis, pension funds running dry. China might face the aftermath of its real estate bubble adjustment for the next 10 years, 20 years, or even longer.